Hey friends, and welcome back to another episode of Thriving Thoughts. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. Today, I have my friends, Tammy McCarthy and Lisa Martinez on the show to talk about how iron sharpens iron. That's actually from the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17, to be exact. It says, as iron sharpens iron, meaning it's getting sharper and better at what it does, so a friend sharpens a friend. This is the episode for you if you are wondering, how can I be in a meaningful friendship, a ride or die friendship where I'm actually sharper, better, faster, stronger because of it. Before we join the conversation, I'd like to remind you that you can enter to win a personally signed copy shipped to you from me of my book, Breakup Breakthroughs, right there on the shelf back there, for those of you watching. All you need to do is listen to this episode, share your favorite takeaway on your Instagram story, tag me at dr.sherryspeaks, and use the hashtag Thriving Thoughts with Dr. Sherry. Help me spread the word to more women who need to hear these incredible, candid, and raw conversations between friends so that they too can learn that it's possible to thrive in friendship. Two of my favorite takeaways. One is when Lisa was describing a story of how Lisa and Tammy had reconnected later on in life. And she said, our hearts just knew each other. And then when Tammy talked about reciprocity and how in this friendship, in this particular ride or die friendship, she's never felt like she hasn't gotten what she's given. And I know a lot of times people can feel like that in friendship, right? So please lean in to this conversation to learn more about how Tammy and Lisa sharpen one another. My mom, who's in her 70s, she lives in the DC area and they have the, all that cicadas, you know, the cicada problem. Oof. So she, she calls me the other day and she says, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. So I'm driving in the car and I feel a cicada crawling up my back. No. Yeah. As she's driving. So she says, I, I lean forward, oh. you know, because I don't want to crunch it between my back and the seat, oh. you know? <laughs> so she says, then I pull over into this strip mall she says, it's nine o'clock at night. There weren't too many people out. And I'm thinking, <laughs> nine o'clock at night, a lot of people are out, you know? She pulls yeah. over to, and she says, she slams the car in park. She rips her shirt off. What? This is my <laughs> 70 year old mother. She rips her shirt, probably wearing like a Madonna bra. You know what I mean? Like she's 70. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's flailing the shirt in the air, <laughs> trying to get the cicada gone. Like outside of the car? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Completely outside of the car. <laughs> not even in like a legitimate parking spot. Like just like pull over, you know, put it into park. <laughs> and I'm telling, she's telling me this story and my eyes are like, I can't even imagine seeing this. Like driving yeah. by. And seeing a woman in her 70s in her bra outside, you know, my nine-year-old, I'm like recounting the story to my kids and my nine-year-old goes, does grandma have no shame? <laughs> Your nine-year-old, that's funny. Come on. No, not when it comes to cicadas. Apparently she back. doesn't care. <laughs> Jeez, there's a bug. Forget it. I mean, yeah. those things are like. Oh, no, they're massive. Yeah, they're so legit. I don't hear them here. Do you guys hear them where you are? Yes. You do. No, I don't hear them at all. Yeah. We haven't yeah. had any real big issues with them here. Yeah. I think they're up in the mountains, um, but they're not down here in the development. I drove to Virginia Saturday to see a client. And um, as soon as I got out of the car, I was like, what is that sound? Because <laughs> it was the first time I heard it. Yeah. Oh it's gosh. loud. Yeah, it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. It yeah. So make... do you have any fun bug or dog stories, Lisa? Fun bug or dog? Um, <laughs> I'm uh, no, I'm drawing a blank right now. I mean, I, I mean, or you could just move to the embarrassing component or, of my yeah. story. Right. Oh, the embarrassing? Like, yeah. Do you have any embarrassing moments to share? Oh gosh, I mean, live on the air, you know. <laughs> live on the air. <laughs> there was one. Okay, so we're gonna bring it back to you know yeah. Tammy and me, right? So I remember I was supposed to meet Tammy, okay, because we met at 
university, right? And we had made a day. I don't even know if you <laughs> remember the story, Tammy, because you you ended up not being there. Okay. But I was supposed to meet her on campus. Um, our Franciscan University had this little chapel. It's called the Port Siancola. I'm called it the port. So I'm supposed to meet Tammy by the port at a certain time. Uh -huh. But we had gone off campus, a group of us to go to church. And when we came back, the cafeteria was closed. And that's where we eat. <laughs> so, so it was a group that was going to go to a place called Eaton Park off campus. And I didn't have a car. So it's like, you know, when they go, you got to go. Yeah. And so I was supposed to meet her and I tried to call, but I couldn't leave a message for whatever, because, you know, we had uh, we had answering machines back then in the 90s. And so I was like, yeah. you know what, let me just go to the um, port and I'm going to leave a note for her on the bench there that we're supposed to meet at to say that I had to go to lunch yeah. and I'll meet you later. So anyways, our, our campus is very hilly and I was wearing this like one piece jumper and, you know, back in the 90s. <laughs> It was like this, they had really flowy pants on the bottom. Yeah. And a friend of mine had borrowed this jumper and she's like, don't run in this when she gave it back to me. And I was like, why? <laughs> and she said, because you, your legs get caught up in the flowy pants. And she's like, I wiped it out. No, I, I was like, okay. So I put it back in my closet. Well, I was wearing that dress that day. <laughs> It was going to don't meet Tammy. Don't run in this dress. It was like going, there's a big hill next to the cafeteria when you're going down to, to get to the port. And so I naturally started to pick up speed. And so I started to jog. Naturally. And, <laughs> naturally. And so my leg got caught in the pant and I went full Superman. I mean, <laughs> arms out, hit the pavement and skid to a stop on a downhill slope <laughs> with a car passing by me at that moment and i think they were all like why did you run in the dress and right I, like, I forgot <laughs> and as i'm laying on the ground there's two guys that i knew were across the street they run over and you know they helped me get up and this was one of those things that you could not gracefully recover from no. you know like oh. i had hit so many parts of my body on this full body slide <laughs> So as I'm getting up, you know, my brain is trying to register what has anything come off of me? You know, has anything detached? Everything hurts right now, but what hurts the most? And it was this part of my arm. So I looked and like everything had been scraped by my um, on my forearm. And so I'm looking down at it and they're looking at me like, this is bad. You know, are you OK? And I was like, no, <laughs> they said, you should really go get cleaned up. And I'm like, yeah. And then I looked down and the fall had ripped the buttons off my dress. So I was exposed. And I <laughs> oh just my goodness. Like, quickly like covered up my chest. And I was like, I gotta go. <laughs> I think fall does not quite describe that. that seriously. So much as like catastrophic slide <laughs> yes. or something. That was a good, that is a good one. But I mean, it wasn't like I was playing softball like I did in high school. I was going in for, you know, home base. I was just trying to. <laughs> I had to leave a note. So that <laughs> now, when did you, Tammy, did you hear this story immediately? I, like, I feel like this is the first time I've heard this story. Probably, probably. Yeah, that's so crazy. I mean, it was so bad. And then we went afterwards. And I remember one of my friends was sitting next to me at the meal. And he just kept, every time he looked over me, go, ah. He's oh. like, <laughs> You were the look, trigger for that memory. Look at you. Yeah. You know what's right. so funny about like that the difference between back then and back now now mm -hmm. is like if I went in the port and I waited for a few minutes and she wasn't there, I would have just assumed something happened. I would have yeah. just, you know, maybe gone by her dorm later or given right, her right. a call. But like if you text somebody and you don't respond back like and right away, I right. mean, people act like you know, are you alive? Are you okay? Did you get kidnapped? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just think about like how many times I would go days without talking to anybody. Yeah. yeah. It's know? true. It's true. Well, yeah. Instant access creates urgency that's unnecessary. True. Yeah. And anxiety yeah. that's not and yeah. necessary. Yeah. You know, as an aside, really quickly, when call waiting came out, when that was a thing. Yeah. Right. And you click the little yeah. thing and click over. My mom refused to get it because she said it was rude. She said, you are prioritizing the person that you're talking to. And if you click over, then that's like, mm. you're not important to me. 
That is true. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. agree with that. But yeah. now we're in a restaurant sitting across from each other, yeah. ignoring each other. Like, because right. I mean, got, I'm not, but yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying. I yeah. say we, yeah. the yeah. collective we. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so you guys have known each other for how many years then? Gosh, 95, since 1995. I mean, that's oh when we goodness. started yeah. university. Not 95 years. <laughs> but, you know, you're like, she's like, how many years? You're like, 95. I was like, where are 95, we going? With this? Right. 95 years. Where are we going? See, this is where you need that other part of your brain that's in the other person to be like, <laughs> sound like a tool right now. So, okay, that's going to make me lead to my very, that like, just my first question is, you know, what made you guys stick? Oh my gosh. Can't you tell? We just like laugh all the time with each other. <laughs> Yeah, but it's got to be more than laughter. I mean, you guys are so. Tammy, you're in Pennsylvania. Lisa, you're in Texas. Mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, there's there's certain friends I believe that you that you're drawn to that you have like you know you just have a fast friendship that you yeah. you know just feel comfortable with. You know, we both have a sarcastic side to us. We both have a sense of humor. We're more extroverted. So we're similar in those mm -hmm. aspects of our personality, I would say. Mm -hmm. But spiritually, I think that's really the glue that has kept us, you know, all, all of these years. And the funny thing about it is, you know, we were friends uh, throughout university. So the four years there, but she got married a couple years after, you know, she met Dan in college, you know, yeah. And I didn't meet my husband until my 30s. And so I yeah. was on, you know, I moved back to Michigan. What, you went to Pennsylvania? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And so we we both like led like separate lives then yeah. and, and didn't connect except through Facebook until a couple of years ago when we got involved in ministry again. So I think the beauty of it is, is, you know, one of those spiritual sisterhoods that you have where it could be years that go by. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, children, she's a homeschool mom. I have been, you know, dealing with infertility for the 10 years of our marriage. And so, you know, and it wasn't like there, any time had passed when we kind of reconnected again, it was like, pick right back up, fall into those deep conversations, mm -hmm. but laughing our butts off. So what caused the reconnection? <laughs> oh, that's a really, that's a really neat story. Well, I think, I think I would go, but to go back for a second, because yeah. I do think that um, nowadays women talk about how hard it is to connect with other women. Mm. And I would say um, I lived outside of DC growing up. I went to mm -hmm. an all girls school. And um, I really struggled with the cattiness of women. Mm -hmm. And so what I noticed when I met Lisa is she had a lot of guy friends. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing for me because I had a lot of guy friends. Yeah. Because guys just kind of say it like it is. And there wasn't this, like I said, cattiness. So when I, we had a mutual guy friend and when her and I would start talking, I'm like she's so easy to talk to. And I, I know where I stand with her. We can just have conversations and there's not, did she mean this by this? You know, I don't know when she looked at me like that. I wasn't sure. It just wasn't like that. It was just there very- There was genuineness, very not authentic. appearances or, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. very authentic. And I, I never got the um, inclination that Lisa was ever, um, was ever judging me, was ever mm -hmm. um, intimidated by me or, yeah. or in any way made me feel um, anything other than kind of delighted in when we mm -hmm. were together. Yeah. And then her and I actually did ministry work. We kind of um, didn't really know that we were both signing up for the same ministry work um, and had done some some work in prayer together. And that just takes it to a whole nother level. Like when you mm -hmm. have that intimacy in prayer with someone mm -hmm. and you're kind of allying your hearts with theirs and you're praying with people and your your friendship mm -hmm. goes beyond this, you know, sarcastic humor to wow, I'm letting you into a deeper place mm -hmm. because of what we're doing, because of mm -hmm. ministry work. I think that's kind of foundational, you know, yeah. being in your being in your early, your late teens, early 20s, to have that kind of impact with another woman, mm -hmm. um, it just lasts. It's something that yeah. you just, you pick back up on because you're like, you were there yeah. when I was really coming into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And you were the kind of friend that kind of sheltered me through that, through a lot of hardships. You know, yeah. we had a lot of trauma together. We kind of grieve with things together. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think that that's when Lisa's talking about you kind of pick back up. It's because you're like, oh, hey, friend. Yeah. You know, it's there just you like, are. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There just you are. Past. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Your hearts know each other. Yeah. And so even though you've been on these different legs of the journey, the heart just is like, you know, it has that memory of your friend. And mm -hmm. it's like that dearness that, you know, drew us together and the spirit that really bonded us, that authenticity. Um, just continued to gel and it grew. And so um, when I reached out to Tammy again was after a period of discernment, after I'd been a caretaker for my dad okay. um, in his final days, and then took some time after he passed away in um, 2019 to really like discern, you know, God's will for my life. And so I was allowing myself time to grieve and to figure out what was next. And he really laid this ministry on my heart because of the restoration that he was doing in me. Um, and he gave me a, you know, kind of a list of names since Tammy's was one of and them. Tammy was on it. <laughs> yes. And I was like, these ladies, like, I want you to reach out to or ask for prayer or whatever. And so I took a time, you know, to discern it and kind of start working in the background on um, the logo with uh, a friend of mine who is our art director and just started putting the pieces together. And yeah. I reached out to my niece first and she gave a yes. And I could say that there was some woundedness in me to collaborating um, with women again because of some previous experiences. Okay. And so there was a bit of like gun shy, I think, mm -hmm. in, you know, reaching out and being vulnerable in that way to say, I don't know exactly what this is all going to be, yeah. but I know that God wants us to use stories and use media to be able to share our hearts and try to accompany people through their own healing and their own restoration. And I knew that Tammy blogged and had been following along on her blog and, and keeping up with her via Facebook and Instagram. And so it was kind of like this I think I started with like an Instagram DM or something was like, can we talk? And, you know, reached out. Yeah. And then I'll turn it over to her because I, you know, I love her response of when I reached out and there was, <laughs> you know, kind of this nervousness, like I said, of like, I was kind of didn't know how I'm going to ask her and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling vulnerable, but I'm loving catching up with her. I think we probably yeah. talked for two hours that first time. But well, I think, I think the other thing is that we, <clears throat> we would tag each other in photos that came up, you yeah. know, we would, um, Facebook kind of allows you to kind of have a sneak peek into someone else's life. So you can see kind of what sure. they're about, yeah. but to go into an intimacy level that we hadn't talked, we hadn't mm -hmm. really had a conversation where it was like, Hey friend, where are you been? What are you doing? What's yeah. going on? And, um, so what was happening with me was at the same time, I had kind of had this, um, like epiphany moment in my prayer time and the Lord had kind of said to me, hey, you know what? You have never made an earnest effort to kind of draw souls back to me. Mm -hmm. Like you've always been a woman of faith. You've always um, have served, but you've never kind of, and the words that were given to me were, you've never invited other people to sit at my banquet table. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, Lord, like, what does this mean? You know, like, what are you asking me to do? <laughs> right. And so over the next few months, I felt like I was being prepared for something, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what it was. Um, but Lisa and I, um, we kind of use this phase. We kind of, we talk in the spirit. Yeah. And that was something that we had done in college. So we very quickly could quickly explain to each other that we felt led to do something. And it was just like, yeah. there was no questions of what we were saying. It was sort of like, well, I feel led here. And then, mm -hmm. especially when we were praying with people, because I think this is kind of important. When we were praying with people, we would kind of be like, I would say, I kind of feel this. And she would say, I confirm that. Mm -hmm. So she always, we always were working with each other like that. So when she, when she texted me and it was a Facebook instant message and she said, Hey girl, it's been forever. Can I have your cell? Can we talk? <laughs> and I said, sure. And so meanwhile, you know, she does, I'm thinking this will be so cool. I can explain to her how I've had this like big epiphany moment and, right. you know, all this stuff's going on in my life. And it was actually when my cell phone was ringing and I had programmed her number in and my phone's ringing and I'm about to click it. And like the Lord said to me, say yes to whatever she asks you. Wow. 
And so we were joking about it later. I was like, I didn't know if I was going to become a beach buddy coach. Was I right. selling essential oils? <laughs> <Right. laughs> what was I doing? <laughs> what am I saying yes to? What am I to? saying yes to? But like the beautiful part about it, and this is what I'd say when we were talking about like speaking in the spirit, was mm -hmm. the next the next line from me, like from the Lord was, and tell her before she talks. Like wow. before she has the opportunity to say something to, to me. To even ask you. Yes. I was to kind of come in powerfully and be like, hey, listen, I just want to stop you. Like the Lord said, I'm supposed to tell you yes to whatever you're asking me. Right. Wow. And, then and the she, freedom that it gave me then, right? Because I'm like, so that now, now you got a blank check, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, okay, how about this, this, this? <laughs> exactly. Will you move in with me? Right, right. Right. <laughs> well, but it was really funny because you could just hear her sigh of relief. Oh, like wow. she was like, oh, girl. <laughs> so let's extract something from this because there's a yeah. there's a thread here that I want to talk about. So a lot of people don't know um some of the terminology that you're yeah. using. Okay. Sure. Um and I think that's important for yeah. us to share that because the only way that we can reach people with our hearts is to explain it in a language that other people can understand. And so a couple of things. One you have the spiritual bond, right? Sure. But, and, and from my perspective, as a, a woman of faith, you first delight yourself in the Lord and therefore then you can delight yourself in one another and have that bond with that thread. So the first question is, do you have other friendships like this one that are not bound by that delight in the Lord? Good question. I mean, I do have friendships that have stood, I would say, the test of time and they've gone back, you know, because we've shared maybe our childhood together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, you know, have many memories. We grew up. But I think it's different in that fact where, you know, OK, you know, we have so much shared memories. We have, you know, we pick back up. But there is something different when you have a spiritual bond with yeah. somebody, um, because that's an aspect, right? We are, we are made of, we've made of flesh, we're made of spirit, mm -hmm. we're made of, you know, our psyche. And when you connect with someone on all those levels, when we are, we have mentally bonded through um, trauma and, yeah. you know, grief in our life, we have spiritually bonded through prayer, we have psychologically bonded and all of those things. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very deep abiding friendship. And um, I also, there's a scripture that comes to mind when I think of Tammy and it's um, in Proverbs 27, where it says, iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a man or another person does yep. um, for one. And I think that she is um, someone who sharpens me, you yeah. know? And so in that there becomes a, a kind of, um, abiding that happens with this kind of friend that mm -hmm. doesn't naturally occur in all friendships, even though they may be old friends, good friends, dear mm -hmm. friends, you know, that there is something that happens with a spiritual bond yeah. um, when you're, when you're oriented in the same way mm -hmm. and that it, it just comes into a place in your soul. That's like, this refreshes me. This mm -hmm. strengthens me. This makes me a better person. Mm. And I think I love that, that word refreshes because, yeah, yeah. you know, going back to what you said, Tammy, about women, I think mostly probably in our early, earlier formative young adulthood years, uh, struggle to have these authentic abiding relationships with other women mm -hmm. because there's a lot of stuff in our flesh that gets in the yes. way, right? And competition and yeah. 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 And, and all of that, but that, so that it is, it is much of the same and it's exhausting. It's mm -hmm. exhausting and it's the opposite of refreshing. Right. <laughs> and so I think that, um, I, I think you're, you're right. In my experience too, Lisa, that with friendship, my friendships, that are with with other women who are believers, who are women of faith that I can take 
um, uh, spiritual or, you know, relational concern to that I can't take to other people who don't have that same bond. There is something deeper. There is something more abiding about that because that's, um, there's an eternal connection Truth. as a, right. As opposed to just the temporal connection. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about this a little bit, the refreshing, because the refreshing doesn't come without what you were saying, Lisa, the ironing, <laughs> sharpening iron, iron, mm -hmm. sharpening iron. Yeah. How do you guys do that for one another? Mm. Oh man. <clears throat> you know, I think it's, I think it's a lot of things, you know, right now um, doing ministry work together, you know, sometimes Lisa will call me about a situation and she'll say, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is how I see this. You know, and sometimes it's, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I heard. I'm fully behind you. And sometimes it will be, mm, I don't know. Because oh, here's, right. the, here's the thing. I've been in yeah. that situation before, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can be like that. Yeah. And I can be like this. And I can see where that person's coming from. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's authentic friendships. People allow you to kind of unload. Yeah. And then they kind of give you back what you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? That. You're not going to leave it all on my doorstep. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let you take back these burdens that you don't need. Yeah. But girlfriend, some good. of this is trash. Yeah. And let's, let's get rid of it. You know, mm -hmm. let's unpack it. Let's be done with it. But yeah. then also I'm not going to sit here and, and hear you maybe have, maybe have, um, you know, things with your husband or there's things with your mom or you're sharing something with me. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe your perspective needs a, a little fine tuning, yeah. you know, <laughs> that I'm like, Hey, listen, as your friend, I can't just sit here and let you tell me all this without right. kind of coming back to you and saying, I think you're kind of being hard on that person, you know, right. or, mm -hmm. or I've been in that situation. And I think or that's what, what she means. This? Or <laughs> yeah. I think that's what she means by iron sharpening iron when, mm -hmm. and you know, Lisa, I love her to death. She is not like me in the fact that she's more type A and she's very mm -hmm. clear. And I, in some ways, can be this wild stallion that I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean deadlines? Like, right. <laughs> like, let's just love everybody and let's talk about things let's and let's just love everyone. You know, and, <laughs> and let's just like whenever I get my blog post done, I do, you know. And but that makes the best combination, right? Yes. <laughs> How, well, I but mean, that's where she sharpens me because she's like, right. Tammy, listen. Right. I'm all for your spontaneity. I'm all for your like adaptability. You're great about that. But listen, people still need to hear what you have to say. You need to produce this. You need to produce this. And girlfriend, you have till Thursday or, you know, and so that's why I mean like iron shape sharpening's iron is like being yeah. able to kind of be there for each other and recognize yeah. each other's weaknesses and not kind of bash each other, but try to strengthen those and try to highlight your girlfriend's well, it's strengths. accountability. It's accountability to be who you see the other person to be. You know, when yes. I think of this parallel, and I'm so thankful to the Lord for giving that imagery to me right now, but um, this parallel of righteousness, you know, um, righteousness is to be as one ought to be, to be mm -hmm. as one was designed to. And so that's how God sees us, yeah. right? as righteous as he, as we are supposed to be. And so in friendship, that parallel is seeing one another as you ought to be and reminding you of that in those mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like harking you back to yourself. And mm -hmm. we, you know, one of the things we're talking about, um, because, uh, we're working on, have you heard of the Clifton, uh, strengths finder? Yeah. yeah. So we're doing that and preparing for a retreat for our team. Okay. And, and you'll have to share your top five with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, I'm going to see if I can guess. Wait, just don't tell me until the yeah. end of the show. I'm going to see if I can guess. <laughs> She's like, don't, don't say it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're sharing, you know, the strengths finder results with one another and the whole thing. And basically, um, one of the beauties is like, we've kind of done this analysis to say like, what are within our team, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, our opportunities, threats, it's called SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. And kind of going through all of these things where you identify, okay, these are our, we our weaknesses, these are our strengths. And when that other person knows and has this information about you, mm -hmm. 
and they don't use it as a weapon, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. They don't use it to say, you know what, you are slacking or you mm-hmm. are or make you feel bad about yourself. Yeah. But they kind of like call you into those things. And they really, um, I mean, the way that, that we described it was like, you know, just that person um, helps you to be a better version of yourself. Yeah. You know, they yeah. call you into that strength. I see your potential in these areas. I know what you're capable yeah. of. And so you just feel um, strengthened, and that's what—that's where the refreshment comes, right? Is that yeah, yeah. that's such a, a such an honest, authentic, loving yeah. relationship, mm-hmm. and it's so refreshing to my soul because other people may take from me because they have needs or they see something, mm-hmm. you know, you minister, you this or that. I'm looking to you for wisdom. I'm looking to you yeah. for something. Have a need fulfilled in some way. Um, the beauty of our relationship is there's a reciprocity, you know, I, Mm -hmm. I get as much or more as I give, you know, from the relationship. And so it's this relationship. How do you know that? Oh, wow. Like, how do you identify that? And and just maybe if you can provide a practical example, because there's a lot of people, women in particular, that don't know how to measure that. They're not really sure what the barometer of that is. So what's that for you? And I know it's a little bit different for everybody, but what is that yeah. for you? Is it a, is it an intuition? Is it a feeling? Is it a P? Pe- what is it? Yeah, I would say, you know, there's a piece that comes, right? You know, in the, when, when there's a conversation and we often, every time we meet and we meet at least once a week, um, we start with prayer. Mm-hmm. And so there's just a, um, like she said, there's a way to come into a space with each other where we can like lay our burdens down. Mm-hmm. And when that other person can like look at all those burdens with you and kind of know you enough to say, you know, um, that's really something you, you don't need to be carrying sister mm-hmm. or, you know, so they, they, th- I think it's the way that I know it is that I feel a peace and I feel, uh, refueled in a way that, I've come away from an interaction with her knowing something better. I feel Mm -hmm. like God has shown me, revealed something to me, whether it's just that we've laughed and I've got joy again in my heart or whether we took the opportunity to cry, you know, which we've done, you know, several times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, And it would be, you know, like, our conversation yesterday, you know, where you can go through and say, she knows that because I'm type A, I'm going to want to feel uh, that I've crossed a couple things off my list in that conversation. Right. So she's like, you know, we talk about team being and team doing in our group because yeah. of some of the practices we do. I'm like team doing and yeah. she's team being. Yeah. And so there's like this great, like you said, it, it's kind of like that opposites attract. And sometimes you can drive each other crazy because she might be like, you're so task oriented, man. Why don't you just chill? And yeah. I could be the other way. Uh, but there comes a, a leveling out. And when you walk away from that, you said, well, I got something out of the, the conversation where I needed that. Mm-hmm. And then I hope she got the same where she felt like I was more present to her, that mm-hmm. I really listened to her, um, that I met her where she was at. And if she needed some guidance and direction, yeah. um, I provided that as well. And that's it. That's how you know. If you can leave an interaction or an experience with a friend feeling refreshed. Yeah. Well, I think it goes like beyond that too, to... Um, I was listening to this quote the other day and they were talking about how one of the best ways that we can love someone is, is to listen, to understand, yeah, not to listen, to reply, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that when Lisa and I talk, um, you know, like she was saying, we start our talks in prayer, but we oftentimes go into our previous conversations. Hey, Mm -hmm. how did that end up? You know, Mm -hmm. or listen, I saw where you like posted this on Instagram. I was dying laughing. What was that about? You know, we kind of, Mm -hmm. there's enough for us to kind of sustain. Yeah. Um, But the other beautiful part about our relationship is Lisa and I have this inside joke that the past six months have been so absolutely crazy for us. And it's, we just feel like we're on this crazy journey. So I was telling her about this gift that I had seen and it reminded me so much of our conversations and it was this pig and the pig was like, had this pinwheel out the window and it was like, yeah. right. And it was, you could just see like the pure joy in this pig's face as this pinwheel went around. Yeah. And I said, um, Lisa, I think we have to focus on that. 
Like as crazy as our life is, we just kind of mm-hmm. have to like with the Lord, we just have to be like, we like wherever Find you're taking us. Of joy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like wherever you're taking us. So, you know, we'll text or she'll send me something like, Hey, pray for this. And I'll hit that gift. You know, I'm like, mm-hmm. and we just kind of, we'll go back and forth with gifts for a little bit, you know, yeah. where we're just like, Hey, just a reminder of why we're doing what we're doing, Yep. you know, and kind of, I think encouraging each other in a very simple off the cuff. Yeah. Friendly way. But then there's been times when Elisa and I FaceTime for our talks. There's been times when she'll love that. Well, she'll take one look at my face and she'll be like, what's going on, friend? Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I'll just burst into tears. Yeah. You know, so and like she said, that's the reciprocity. It's like there's times when we're on the call and she's just, you know, I want she has to get this done, this done, this done. And then she kind of breathes this sigh of relief. And then I'm like, and what else? And then it's she's unburdened something else that's on her heart. Mm-hmm. You know, or for me, I'm very emotion led. So for me, sometimes it's just all over my face. Yeah. You know, but the other thing about reciprocity is, you know, recently I'd been talking to Lisa about COVID. And my husband has severe um, lung issues. Mm. And so this was a, a big concern. It's been a concern for us. We've been told any pneumonia could take his life. He's yeah. 50. And um, so every winter is tough for us. Every flu season mm. is tough. When COVID came through, there was sort of this, oh, no, you are the perfect candidate for this to be a right. huge issue. So Lisa knew that that was always in the back of the prayer intentions, was kind of pray protection over my family. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, so COVID came through our house in the middle of May Mm. and just recently. Yes. Just recently. And, um, she called me up and she was like, sister, what can I do? You know? And I was like, I I don't know. I am like, I'm mom. I'm positive, but I'm mom. So I can't be sick. And I have some downstairs who aren't. And my husband's isolated upstairs and I'm like serving some who are in quarantine. I'm just like, when I don't, I don't know. And then like this delivery from Costco came on my porch and it was Lisa and she got it. Mm -hmm. Like she got that. I needed the kids to self-serve. So it was mac and cheese and you know, everything kids can throw in the microwave and quick pastas. And um, the cutest part was one of my girls picks up this big box of Jimmy Dean breakfast sandwiches, <laughs> which like Lisa doesn't know is like coveted item in my house. Oh my goodness. And it was a Costco Why? version. So it's like 18 count, you know, right. and I have five, five children and they do the math all the time. And they're like, well, you right, like gone in two days. Yeah. It's, right. you know, so my daughter picks this up. Like it's the Holy grail, you know? And she was like, how did she know? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the icing on the cake. Right. I kind of like laughed. I was like, guys, you know, it's just Miss Lisa. It's what she does. You know, it was just, it was one of those, I think that her and I both have a lot of these moments where we're like, how did you know? It's just yeah. that connection. I feel like it's a connection of the Holy Spirit. I feel like it's that prompting that's like, you know, you should call. It's, it's mm-hmm. the prompting that her and I were on the phone one day and I said to her, like, like, how can I unburden you? Like, you seem so burdened. Like, how can I unburden you? What can I physically do? And I think sometimes just being asked that by somebody who yeah. cares about you. And yeah. like you said, I'm outside of Philly and she's in Texas. So we're just, we're not physically close. Mm-hmm. But the beautiful thing about this retreat that we're throwing is I said to her, I cannot wait to put my arms around you. Yeah. I mean, it has been so long. It's Over been, 20 years. The last time? Oh, years. you guys haven't seen one another in person for 20 years. No. Wow. You're not yeah, going to know what to do with the half below the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like Snoopy, oh, Snoopy right. legs, you know? <laughs> you know so we'd be like, where is that woman going? Yeah. No, absolutely. So I mean, tell us. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah. No, I was just going to say to that point that she said, um, you know, when, when her daughter said, how did she know? How did she know about the breakfast sandwich? You know, I just said, it's the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the Holy yeah. Spirit. I've mm-hmm. stood there. I'm like, what needs to be done for this woman? Because she is so overwhelmed. She cannot identify it. And, you know, I just said, if the kids could be fed, whatever, because if I send over a meal or whatever, so I get on the horn with the rest of our team within, you know, a couple hours, all the money is PayPal, mm-hmm. you know, the Costco order has been delivered. 
And then we know, you know, our ministry is little with great love. Well, that was a little thing with great love. Yeah. They just needed food for a few days so that mom could just rest and yeah. try to recoup and that she didn't have to think about oh, how do I get groceries and how do I get all these mouths fed right now? You know? Yeah. So I, I love how that story um, is an example of bearing one another's burdens. Yeah. You know, when I think about that, I think of bearing one another's burdens when you're in this type of deep abiding relationship that you guys are in, what the other person goes through, you, you feel like, yes. So it's sure. a lot of times people, people will say things like you need to just get outside of yourself to help somebody else. But I think we have to get inside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, what would I be feeling in this situation? So, you know, how can I, how mm -hmm. can I relieve her of this? What yeah. would I want if I, you know, so I think that's a beautiful example. Um, and I love the, the little icing on the cake of the, or the, <laughs> you know, biscuit on the egg. Of the Jimmy Bean's <laughs> breakfast sandwiches. Well, you know, I think something, True. something that's also like really beautiful about friendships. And this is something that um, Lisa and I have talked a lot about this, about trying to create, um, just a different version of women today. Like just wanting women mm -hmm. to feel like they, um, I don't want to use the word empowered because I, I, I kind of, I struggle with that word. I, I, like I that think word. I just want the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. I want women to feel loved and respected and, yeah. and, um, and appreciated. And so one mm -hmm. of the things that, you know, Lisa and I love to do is to connect our friends with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so um, I have a good friend here in Philly that mm -hmm. I said to Lisa, oh, my gosh, you would love this girl. Like she s speaks in the spirit. I mean, she's so funny and she's so flippant. And, you know, I think when you have that, when you have this holy sisterhood, when you have mm -hmm. these women that speak life over you, yes. it's much like the scripture verse that talks about, like, not hiding your light under a bushel basket. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like when you have these women that just speak life, you want to yeah. get them next to a mic. You want to get yeah. them following on Instagram. You want to, you want them to meet in person. You yeah. just want other women to feel what you experience, mm. you know, and yeah. to feel, and to feel that fullness of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, with Lisa, like that's one of the reasons why we have, you know, we like sometimes going live. We like people to watch the way that we interact with each yeah. other yeah. because I think that as funny as Lisa and I are with each other and people are drawn to that, like the authenticity that we have, there's, there's a depth there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's like you said, there's a deep care for each other. Um, there's a deep care even for like each other's marriages, you know, like I've never yeah. met Mike, I've never met her husband, mm -hmm. but I said to her, um, I'm actually flying to her and then her and I are going to the retreat. Okay. And, um, and I wait, said, when is this happening? In July. In a month. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. But I said, I can't <laughs> wait to meet Mike. Like I can't <laughs> wait to meet this person who has captured your heart. You know, yeah. like, I can't wait to see what he's all about. Yeah. And I think that's the part, like you were talking about, that's a part of like loving the person is that yes. you, you want to see what their life looks like. Yeah. You want to see them yeah. plucked into their every day and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. So you guys have mentioned ministry a couple of times. Yeah. What, um, what is your ministry? Tell us about that. What are you doing? Yeah, so yeah, a little with great love. We we launched in um, January 2020, and it really is just it's a website, littlewithgreatlove.com, where we share stories. And so we use media to um, use the power of story to connect with others to try to bring them into restoration um, through Christ. Um, okay. So there's a group of us. There's about eight of us ladies that um, have been contributors, and we've used video podcast um and what and so like a perfect example of of you know drawing from this friendship so i'm the founder and tammy is um contributor speaker and spiritual mom of the group um so like we're all her little chicks you know and stuff and she's the <laughs> spiritual mama hen you know <laughs> and um her and i were just having our weekly right uh, back in january of this year and in this conversation, like we, we've got to put on, so uh, it's uh, we are Christian ministry. So, you know, all are welcome, but uh, all of 
we were Catholic as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Lent was coming up and we, we need to do something for Lent. There's 40 days. This is significant in our liturgical calendar (laughs) of the year. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? And so I had been soliciting, you know, ideas from all the different ladies and really kind of taking it to prayer. But her and I are just having our weekly, we sit down, you know, for our Tuesday FaceTime and she, we're talking about the saints and we're talking about how, you know, they inspire us. And she really wished that there was kind of like a cliff notes version on the lives of the saints, like saints for slackers. And I was like, that's it. Wait, hold on. <laughs> the, the Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> right. Saints for slackers. Yeah. So we ended up doing our first podcast, which reached um, over 20 countries, over 2000 downloads. And we did 40 plus podcasts. And we got 18 different people outside of our ministry to collaborate with us. And we had wow. Redbird Ministries, a grief ministry that's a nonprofit yep. that deals with child loss. Uh, you've interviewed Kelly Bro, Kelly, the founder, yeah. mm-hmm. um, to, to be co-sponsor with us. And, you know, we did T-shirts and we did all kinds of things. But what was beautiful was it was a conversation between me and my friend that the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. used to just inspire And out of that conversation became this whole, you know, slacker movement and with the sloth as our, as our, you know, (laughs) mascot. (laughs) And it was really amazing to see the fruit that was born out of just a conversation between two good friends. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think that what we were, had been talking about is her and I both were at the time were reading autobiographies of saints. Okay. And we were and we were kind of we were being very passionate about sharing these various facts that we had learned. And I said, you know, I really just wish that there was like something that I could read that was like beyond the factual. Because her and I are very drawn by story. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'd like to read something really powerful, like a hey, did you know? <laughs> and then just hit me with something for like two mm-hmm. or three minutes. And that's where we came up with like the cliff note version. Like I wish instead of me having to read all these books, I just had right. these really awesome stories that would feed me. And so that's what the podcast like was. for Catholics. Mm-hmm. Right. And well, and the podcast yeah. was yeah. like, they were like these, like anywhere were between two and like five minute uh-huh. podcasts. And so it was really perfect for what we would consider slackers. Um, because you could, you could technically, you know, we, we did, they were daily through Lent. So 40 days, Mm -hmm. but you could listen to three or four at one time because they were short and they were, and they were really inspirational. And they, we had, you know, we're an all women's ministry, but we had several men that got on there and shared their favorite saints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, we had a a big blend and the the part that really came out of it was we were like, okay, so if this is a, a ministry that was really inspired by like the example of Mother Teresa, who said, you know, we can't all do great things, right? But we can we can do small things with great love. Mm-hmm. And of of St. Therese, who, you know, died at 25, but lived this life, this interior life that really looked to do a little, her little way to do little mm. things again with great love. Then what can we do for kind of a people right now that has been just really worn down mm-hmm. through 2020? Yes. And we're kind of, as we're entering the year, the year our, our thing was like, we, we cannot take one more friggin' thing. Like mm-hmm. we just cannot. <laughs> and so of course it didn't stop during Lent. We had to take a lot more friggin' things, but <laughs> it was like, we can do this little by little. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, we could just say, give us two to three minutes and we'll come up with, we did this whole wannabe saints, which would be like, you know, Saint impatience, uh, the patron saying of I'm tired of this crap. And, you know, (laughs) you know, we, we did shirts for all of those and everything, but it it was like, let's bring a little bit of humor and joy into this. Let's just give everybody just a little thing to do every day so that you just feel, you know, like, Oh man, that just kind of comforted my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, like that was something that I could accomplish. Didn't ask too much of me, but it fed me and nurtured me just like a good friend would. And realizing that, the saints are really just our friends in heaven, you know, and stuff. And so we just wanted people to have a new friend, you know, for the 40 days. So it was good. Well, I have, I have not two new friends because Lisa's not new, but after this yeah. conversation, I have another new friend. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. Yes. I, lo- I love both of your hearts. Um, you're, it's really a pleasure to meet you and chat with you about friendship. But as we close out today, 
a couple of things. Um, what are you looking for? Do you need help with anything? Do, are you looking for contributors? Are you looking for other people to get involved in your ministry? Because you've got a platform here and you never know who's listening. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. I think that um, we're going to take our retreat and kind of take the time to gel, but I would love to hear from people um, that would be interested. I think there are some areas editorially um, and story-wise that we could use some assistance. So if somebody's looking, they're, they have a love for the w- written word, they have a love for media, they have a, a heart for ministry, and really it's a heart that's disposed to um, healing. You know, you mm-hmm. have to be willing to, the way that we talk about it is that, you know, the, this is a messy area for people, right? You know, we're coming into woundedness. <laughs> we're coming into areas of the heart that, you know, need some care and attention. Yeah. Um, but they have, you have to know kind of how to um, just be with people, you know, sit with people and that kind of thing. So you have to have our heart, you know, that, that really um, seeks healing and that really wants to uh, be a part of that. So um, you can reach out through littlewithgreatlove.com and okay. there's a contact form or we're on Facebook or on Instagram. You can reach out through any of those platforms. Um, and really, I would say other than that, you know, we we want a journey with with people that need healing. So our hearts are really disposed to if there's something um, like Tammy wrote this wellness post um, just talking about, you know, do you want to be well? And Mm -hmm. kind of this area of coming into like, I know in my mind that I need to, uh, you know, have these attitudes and dispositions towards food and and exercise. And then there's what actually happens. And, um, somebody reached out to the website and she just said, you told my story, you know, and that she was part of a a Catholic and recovery group and was really trying to find a sponsor and figure out um, how to shed, you know, this extra weight, but really kind of change that mindset. Mm -hmm. And she resonated, or, uh, you know, Tammy's story resonated with her. Mm -hmm. Um, So we want to, we want to find people that say, you know, i I'm seeking, you know, prayer in the journey, or I'm seeking some kind of accompaniment, people to walk with me through the mess. Um, so reach out to us, you know, connect with us. I would, I would say too, you know, if you're listening to this and you, you know, are kind of drawn into Lisa and my relationship and just the way that we interact with each other, these are sort of very similar to the posts that we write. You know, yeah. we, we write in a way that we draw people into um, various things. We talk about anxiety. We talk about mm-hmm. marriages. We talk about sisterhood. Real life stuff. It's very, it's very yeah. real life. And it's very, um, I feel like, you know, I read a lot of my sister's posts and I feel like sometimes it's, you feel like you're having tea with a friend. Yeah. So, you know, my suggestion would be, you know, pull up the website, take a look at some of the different posts mm. that are written because every one of us has a friend that we can click share yeah, and send something to because we're like, this is exactly what you went yes. through or this is what you're going through or this sounds like your sister or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. You know, when we have people that we know that are hurting and our question is, how can we help you? Sometimes it's just sharing other wisdom for other women who's, who've been there, kind of done that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I would encourage that, you know, just to kind of uh, journey with us and, um, and where we've been. <laughs> so leave us on this uh, journey after the podcast, leave us with a truth about thriving in friendship that you want the listeners to remember and know. I think when you're thriving in friendship, um, you have to look towards the heart of the other and think about, okay, I always talk about this in ministry and I think it replies and it applies, ex, you know, very much so in relationship because ministry involves relationship. Mm-hmm. You can't really do good ministry unless you're in relationship with people. And so in good relationship, whether it's with God or with, with a dear friend, like it is um, these many years with Tammy is that I look to the, to the heart of her, you know, mm-hmm. it's not just about what, I can get, you know, I need to be unburdened. I'm overwhelmed in my life. My anxiety is through the roof right now. How can I get her to help me? But I also look to her to say, what does her heart need? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I love her? How can I serve her? How can I be a good friend to her? I think if you approach friendship with that um, concept of looking to the heart and then seeing, you know, allowing that person, but I think a great gift is to let them, let them be themselves. You know, if you just let, you know, that's what she was speaking to in the very beginning. 
is uh, the more that you can allow someone to authentically be themselves, mm -hmm. the more that they will open their heart to you. Mm -hmm. And the more that their heart will want to, you know, serve your heart, know your heart and um, be that good friend because you've allowed them just to be the fullest expression of themselves mm -hmm. and to feel loved in that way. Um, you stole half my answer. So thanks for that, Lisa. <laughs> well, finishing we're, each other's we're sentences, one heart. starting each other's sentences. <laughs> you know what? Here's what I would say too. Um, I would say make a commitment to that person, mm. you know, and your friendships. I think what happens is sometimes we have these periods where time goes by and we haven't really checked in and then we feel like yes. too much time has gone by and there's too much to share. Um, Lisa said, you know, her and I talk every Tuesday and we have this, you know, commitment to like, we have a commitment to like an hour. Yeah. So she was talking about like her whole, like, you know, she likes to get all these things done. <laughs> so her and I were talking and I was like, so should we like have a, like an agenda? So I stay on task. So we get all your <laughs> stuff done. And then we had to have a really good discussion where I was like, listen, I don't want to lose the, the Lisa and Tammy of this because we have business yeah. to do. Right. So now what we do is we just leave voice messages all the time. Like we'll go on WhatsApp and we'll just like, you know, I might have like a six minute message from Lisa who's just like, you will not believe what happened. And then, <laughs> you know, when I get a second, I'm like, I will send her a message and I'm half the message. I'm just laughing in response yeah. to what she said, but I bullet point everything. Okay. When you said this, I thought that this was so funny about this, but we stay connected. Yeah. And I think that's really important. It's mm -hmm. on purpose. And I think it's also, we also kind of just sometimes send messages. We're like, Hey, you know, I was in prayer today and I got the scripture verse and it was spot on our conversation. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you should take it down, mm. you know, or Lisa will be like, Hey, I was just thinking about you today. And, um, I don't know what's going on, but I'm here. If you need to chat sister, I love mm. you. So I think in this world where everyone's so busy, mm -hmm. I think if you, when you carve out time for your friends and it's a, a weekly time or like a yes. monthly time where you make mm -hmm. that commitment, then that's where the flowering of the friendship happens. Yep, it's right. because someone's saying, I choose you. Cultivating. Yeah. Yeah. I choose you mm -hmm. at this time. I choose you every week at this time yeah. because I want this I prioritize you. you. Yeah. 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 I, I feel, I huge. feel that. Yeah. Especially cause you know, I mean, she's got, She's got a house full, you know, and stuff. And so, you know, for me, I've got this office that closed my door. There's not children. I don't right. have pets. It's like, it's quiet. It's like a lot, <laughs> you know, she's like having to orchestrate rides for multiple people yeah. and, you know, and everywhere she goes, they all follow because yeah. they love her, you know, and they want to be with her. And so there'll be these moments where we're on FaceTime and that'll just go on mute and you'll see the... Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause she's, yeah, she's trying to, she has let everybody know this is Miss Lisa time. Do not disturb me. And you know, what I love about that is that she protects that. Yeah. It makes me feel chosen by her. It yeah. makes me feel important to her and a priority to her. And I think that that's, you know, that's an important thing to feel from your friend is that you really care. What matters to me matters to you. You have carved out time, you know, you're making that quality time with me. I feel loved and I feel chosen. But in the same token, I think that there's also, there's been times when, you know, Lisa will message me and she'll be like, I have family in town. Like, this is just not going to happen. Like, I want to be there, but I'm not going to be there mentally. Right. Like, I'm, I'm like being, I'm just doing too much, you know, or when she mm -hmm. sent me a text message and she was like, Listen, I know you're hanging on by a thread over there with COVID. I'm assuming we're not talking today, but girl, I got you. You know, don't think about anything ministry wise, but yeah. just focus on what you're what you're gonna do. And I think that we think the best of each other. You know, mm -hmm. there's been times when her and I are gonna be having a meeting and I'm like, Lisa, listen, I'm gonna make this happen, but I'm gonna be really honest with you. You're gonna be FaceTimed in a cup holder while I drive my daughter to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, you know, if I go mute, it's because my dog is being psychotic and I don't want you to hear that. But if my yeah. eyes bat a lot, it's because I hear it, but I'm protecting you from it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, it just goes back to that whole, like, you know, just being honest. I've yes. never left a conversation yes. with Lisa where I've been like, what was that about? You know, or I've never left a conversation right. where I didn't or I wish like I had said whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just always, we're just, it's hard. Actually, I feel like it's harder for us to leave the conversation. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have had three hours before yeah. we were just mm-hmm. like, okay. and we could keep going. You yes. know? <laughs> we're like, um, we really, I really should. Uh, I was like, I think people need to eat at this point. (laughs) Right. Right. Make sure my family's alive. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Out there. Yeah. 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 That's a dynamic duo right there. I love how I was on the verge of tears a couple of times in that. And that simply is a reflection of the authenticity of the, the relationship between Tammy and Lisa and that spiritual bond. I'd love for you to share this episode with a friend. Please follow Tammy and Lisa. Most importantly, follow the incredible work that they're doing at Little With Great Love. All of the links to follow them and connect and get involved if you'd like to in this ministry through story to women are in the show notes. Also remember, you can join my Thriving Thoughts texting community. Try it free for 14 days. All you need to do is text the word THRIVE to 540-369-2139. Until Friday, friends, with another monologue episode from me all about friendship. Remember, please speak truth over the lies. And I promise you will thrive, yes you will, in any and every circumstance.